Welcome to the Golden State Media Concepts Life and Happiness Podcast, the show that takes you on a journey of exploration. We'll discuss tried and true methods alongside the latest trends of how to best live your life to its fullest and happiest. From psychology to meditation, science to self-help books, the GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast will help you to discover what makes you happy and how you can live life being the best you possible. Happiness Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Alyssa Joe. Hello, hello, everybody. How is it going today? I hope you're having a wonderful day so far and a wonderful week. I hope it's been productive and positive and you're feeling good. Um, I am back to share more information with you on how to live your life to the happiest and the fullest. And today, we're really going to focus on the living your life to the fullest part. Um, we're going to be talking all about fulfillment in our lives because it is so so important and I talk a lot about you know making sure you're going to live every single day to the fullest and make the most out of it and today's episode really hit for me I was doing a bunch of research for it and it gave me a lot of clarity and it just reminded me how important it is to focus on yourself and to you know really focus on what you need and your values and how that plays such a strong role in our overall happiness and our fulfillment and feeling fulfilled in life is so so crucial Um, if we cannot feel fulfilled or satisfied you know we're never going to be truly truly happy and of course that's what we want right we want to live the happiest life that we can and that's why I'm here to always bring you some tips on how to live your life to the happiest and the fullest and I'm just super excited about today's episode I've got so much information for you today if there has been any sense of feeling unfulfilled in any aspect of your life today's episode is going to help you this research was just so so crucial for me like I I was just super excited when I when I planned today's episode so let's jump right into it I'll stop talking about how excited I am about it and I will actually start teaching you how to live your life to the fullest so today I got a few subjects we're gonna be talking about we're gonna be talking about what your needs are your values defining your needs and your values we're gonna be talking about Maslow's hierarchy of needs Um, You might not know what that is yet, but lots of information about that. And also, of course, why you could be feeling unfulfilled and what can you do about it. Now, I'm going to ask you one very important question that I want you to be thinking about this entire episode, okay? And it's going to come up a lot. I'm also going to be asking you probably a few different questions that I want you to think about. But really, really think about this one specific question throughout this entire episode. And that is, what are your needs? Okay, so not the things that you want. Not your dreams, not, you know, that that fancy beach house or that fancy sports car. Um, you know, we all want different things, but what are your needs? What are the things that you absolutely need for your life to survive, to be the person that you want, to be the person that you are? What are your needs? Okay, so let's rewind here a little bit. So let's say you landed your dream job, you have great family and friends, you're in the best shape of your life, you know, everything seemingly is going perfect, right? So it seems, right? Your life is is good on the, you know, at least on the outside, right? You got this, you got that vision, you're feeling good, or it looks like you're feeling good, I should say, but you are feeling unfulfilled. So wh- why is that exactly, right? And it, you know, basically what you need to ask yourself is are you getting your needs met that's why I'm asking you what are your needs because we have to think about what we need not your hopes not your dreams not the big house on the beach or the fancy sport car but the things you absolutely need in life okay so think about that for a moment now think about this has there ever been a time where your needs have been met but you still feel unsatisfied or unfulfilled Probably. 
And by probably, I mean, yes, of course you have. Because if you said no, you're lying to me and you're lying to yourself. It is human nature to want more. Especially as we grow and our view on the world continues to change, we are we are always going to want more. We're always going to want the next step. We're looking for, we're always looking forward, right? Or we should be trying to look forward. And sometimes that means that we forget to appreciate the things that we have right in front of us. And, but even if we're getting everything we want, like I said, even if you landed your dream job, you have great family and friends, you're in the best shape of your life, you know, everything seems so perfect. There is still a high chance that you could be feeling unfulfilled. And there's so many reasons of why you could be feeling unfulfilled. I will get into that a little bit later. But what's most important is to try to define what your needs are. um, Define, we're going to be talking about defining your values as well. But just understanding that it it is normal to feel unfulfilled even when everything else seems perfect. Because we're humans and we're always growing, we're always changing. And we can notice subtle changes in the way that we feel about our life. You know, maybe it's as we get older, you see these subtle changes or maybe they aren't so subtle. You know, maybe you're going through something big and you're really seeing a huge change in the way that you feel about yourself and your life. And this involves all different aspects of your life, right? Your career, your family, your friendships, your free time, your self-reflection, your spirituality. Like your list can go on, right? It, It affects all aspects of our lives. And we notice the changes of our emotional state within these aspects. Okay, so once again, what are your needs? What are the things that you truly can't live without? So things that were once a need in our life, you know, that were once fundamental to our existence may no longer matter to you as much. And you got to remember that that's okay, Like I said, we're always growing and we're always changing. Things change and we're we're moving forward, we're growing. Life life is different, different aspects of our life is is it's evolving, right? So just sometimes things that we once found very satisfying or rewarding, just fulfilling in general, no longer have that same depth in our lives. And then, of course, it can go both ways as well. We can discover new passions and needs, right? Over time, it, it just happens, right? We discover new things that, oh my gosh, I that I need this in my life now, right? And that's kind of the part of, of growing and changing is that those needs and values, they will come and go and you will change. So remember that when you're thinking of your needs as well. Now, I'm going to be let I'm going to be talking about your values and your needs, but I want to start with what our needs are first. And when you come to the conclusion that something is missing in your life, no matter how hard you try and you just still don't feel satisfied or fulfilled, we have to figure out what exactly is missing. Especially if it seems like everything is perfect, right? You got your dream job, dream house, you got good family and friends. Everything else seems perfect, but you do not feel fulfilled. Now, what is missing? Okay, so I'm going to be talking about now Dr. Abraham Maslow, his hierarchy of needs. I don't know if you know who he is. Um, You might just know it as Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Um, He created this about 80 years ago, okay? Yes, I know it may seem a little outdated, but I wouldn't be sharing it with you if it wasn't still relevant to today. I did a bunch of research on this, and I really understand his theory, and I really see his perspective. And yes, it is 80 years ago, but there are so many parts of this theory of this hierarchy that he has created of our needs that plays essential roles in our life today. So... Figuring out exactly what is missing can be really difficult, right? Especially when everything seems perfect. So how do we figure that out? And I think that this hierarchy is a really, really great way of of figuring those things out. Now, it might not be, you know, dead on exactly uh, relevant to your life or to your needs and to to you in general, But I think the basic understanding of Maslow's hierarchy of needs can play an essential role in figuring out what is missing in our life. So basically, he believed that we have five categories of needs. 
and then they're all arranged in a hierarchy. So visualize a pyramid, okay, and I... I have posted this up on our social media, the pyramid of the hierarchy. So if you want to go check that out and see it for yourself, it is up on our social media. So so go take a look at it and get that visualization into your head. But picture a pyramid, okay? And Maslow believed that we progress through this pyramid from bottom to top. So basically, once one level is satisfied, then we continue to move on up. It makes sense, right? Okay. So he figured out five categories, and I'm going to list them for you and talk about them from bottom to top, but not before we take a little bit of a break. I'm sorry to leave you on a cliffhanger, um, but I am going to take a little bit of a break, and when we get back, I will go through all the five categories in order, how this plays an essential role in your life, and then, of course, we're going to be talking about how we can use this hierarchy to find those missing things in our lives. We're going to be talking more about your needs, your values, and more tips and tricks on how to feel fulfilled. So don't go anywhere. I got lots of great information to share with you, so stay tuned. I will be right back. Are you tired of the same old news? Are you sick of the seemingly endless political spin and negativity? The DSNC America Still Beautiful podcast is a weekly news podcast covering all the top positive and uplifting news stories. We cover stories that will inspire, uplift, and remind you of the good in the world. Tune into the Golden State Media Concepts America Still Beautiful podcast to get all the great and positive news stories of today. Download the GSNC America Still Beautiful podcast on iTunes. Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast. Okay, hello everybody. We are back after that short little break and I have so much more information to share with you. Today we are talking all about fulfillment. Finding what's missing in your life and how we can fill those missing pieces. um, Exactly how we can identify those things. But there's some steps that we need to take. There's some questions we need to ask ourselves. And I really want to share Maslow's hierarchy of needs with you because I think it is a great foundation foundation into figuring out what is missing in your life okay now like I mentioned before it might not be dead center with your life or with all the aspects of your life it might not be in the exact order as what you want it to be in but just just bear with me okay I think it is such a good base understanding so we're starting from the bottom to the top And this is what Maslow believed we need to work through. So we start at the bottom, and once one level is satisfied, we move to the next step. And then once that level is satisfied, we move to the next step. Okay, so at the bottom of the pyramid is our psychological basic needs. Okay, so our needs for survival. Food, water, shelter, sleep, temperature. Okay, our basic, basic needs. Okay, it's important to note that this level, our basic psychological needs are biologically driven needs, okay? This is, so basically that means if something is missing, your body is going to tell you, okay? If you are hungry, your stomach is going to tell you. If you are dehydrated, your stu- like your body is going to tell you, right? Like you're going to feel dehydrated. Um, if you are tired, you're not sleeping well, your body is going to tell you. If you are too hot or you are too cold, your body is going to tell you. Okay, so these are basic survival needs, but they are biologically driven. Okay, and this is at the very, very bottom of the pyramid. You can't focus on your work with an empty stomach growling at you, right? So these aren't just physical as well they don't just affect your physical body but if you are missing these needs it's of course going to affect your mental health as well so because even though you know you have other needs of course than just these basic survival needs these are the basic essential things that we need 
at, at the base of everything. Okay. So that, that's category number one. Now, category number two is safety. So fear is one of our most basic hardwired emotions. We all have fear and fear drives us in a positive way and a negative way. And when we are young, fear is very prevalent. Fear is prevalent in all ages of our lives. But when we are young, it is very prevalent. So have you ever seen a toddler kind of run behind their parents' legs and hide when a stranger approaches them, right? It's because it's an unknown, scary situation or environment for them. So they hide, right? They're scared. They're, they're, it, they're terrified. And, right, we all did that when we were younger. And then as we grow up, our brains continue to monitor the environment, Okay, so now our brains are on physical and mental high alert for our safety all of the time. All of the time. So you, you would think almost this is as, as a basic need, but this is one level up, okay? And when we feel chronically unsafe, our physical and mental health reflects on that hugely. Okay, so many studies have shown that living in an unsafe neighborhood is detrimental to our health. So level one, our psychological basic needs, and level two, safety. Okay, so those seem to me the pretty basic understanding of our needs. Now, remember to keep thinking while I'm talking throughout today's episode, keep thinking about what your needs are. What do you value? What are your needs? Okay. Now, level three is love and belonging. So relationships, family, friends, partners, colleagues, feeling that sense of belonging, like a sense of community. This is level number three. It's not just about receiving though and feeling that love and the connection. You know, of course we need that, and it's always such a good feeling to to feel loved, to feel connected, to feel that sense of community, right? It, it's super important to to have that and feel like you belong somewhere. But it's also the need to love and appreciate others, okay? So this section of the pyramid only connects to our psychological well-being. That's it. And studies have shown that having a stronger social relationships in our lives predicted a much higher likelihood of still being alive years or decades later. So having those strong relationships, connecting, um, loving others, and being loved is detrimental to our health. You will live a longer life if you feel connected. Um, That human connection, that feeling of love, those, those feelings. Okay, so that's level number three. Level number four, so we're reaching up to the top almost, is esteem. So our need to feel good about ourselves. Our need to have that confidence and feel content, okay? So that self-love and that self-care that we always talk about. So it doesn't also just go for yourself. This, This also means, you know, it's the need to feel valued by others, okay? The need to feel you know, that others feel good about you, that others value you. And this one can be a little different for everyone. It shows up in everybody's life, I think, a little bit differently um, because it can show up in many forms. So this may show up in your life with a form of charity work. This could be getting higher education. This could be being an expert at something or being in a... um, professional like profession like a like a like a like a helping profession I should say um like you're servicing others you know so some involve service to others while some others you know this could involve virtue or it could even involve you know being the center of the tension and this is kind of different for everybody so before I tell you number five, so we got number one, psychological basic needs. Number two is our safety. Three is love and belonging. Four is our esteem. And now number five, top of the pyramid, is self actualization Okay? This is the ultimate achievement of your potential. That you are living your life to the full potential. That there is, that is it. You are doing it. You know your purpose in life. You know your value. And you are living up to that potential. That's number five on the pyramid. At the very, very top. 
And Maslow believed that self-actualization takes on the form of basically an extraordinary creativity or achievement. For example, Barack Obama becoming the first black president of the USA. That is an extraordinary, huge achievement. So Maslow believed that that's self-actualization, is taking on that form of extraordinary achievement or creativity. He believed that for us to achieve self-actualization, the other levels of needs need to be met first. This is at the complete top of the pyramid. And remember, we have to work our way up. Um, So this is different for everybody. Those are the five categories of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Um, I'm curious what you think of these. I thought they were pretty basic. I thought they were pretty understanding. I think they connect to our relevant life. Um, But how accurate is this, right? How accurate is Maslow's theory? And that's really for you to decide on your own. Um, Of course, since then, there has been lots of studies that state he is bang on. Uh, He got it. Those are the five categories. These are great needs, values in your life. Um, While others say that, you know, it might be a little bit out of order or that it just doesn't, it's not relevant to everything, whatever the case is, right? But in all studies, I will say this, people did pick their basic needs over the rest. So having clean water and food over becoming a doctor. That's what people chose in every single study. And you can go online, you can search up all these different studies. I read so many of them on Maslow's theory. Um, some some said it was, yep, this is completely, you know, perfect to help you find what's missing in your life. And others felt a little bit differently. So that's for you to decide. But remember to keep thinking, what are your needs? Okay? So I have noticed that we tend to take the people closest to us for granted Because we feel secure that they're always going to be around. Have you ever felt like this? And this is so ironic because this approach means that we offer the least amount of attention and nurturing to the relationships that bring us the most meaning to our lives. It's crazy how we do that, right? Because we get used to it. We get comfortable. We know those people are going to be there. So we tend to not, you know, maybe treat them the best. To not value them as 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 much as we should. And this all plays a role into our essential or into our overall well-being. Okay, it's time for a little bit of a break again, but do not go anywhere because I'm going to talk a little bit more about Maslow's theory, and then we're going to jump into exactly defining your values and how that plays such an essential role in finding fulfillment in your life and figuring out why you might be unfulfilled. And then, of course, I'm going to give you more tips and tricks, specifically three steps that you can implement into your life to feeling more fulfilled instantly okay don't go anywhere i got lots more to share with you i will be right back tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts now listen close and hear this out there's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching the golden state media concepts podcast network is here Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch, whatever it may be. Visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter. And download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast. I'm your host, Alyssa Joe. Hello, hello. Okay, we are in the last stretch of today's episode. I want to fill today's episode with as much information as I can because I think it is such crucial information to finding that fulfillment in our life. So we just went over Maslow's hierarchy of needs. 
I hope you have been thinking about what your needs are. I hope you've been thinking about what your values are because it is so, so crucial. And so I mentioned before the break that, you know, I've noticed that we take the people closest to us for granted sometimes because we always think that they're going to be there. And I mentioned that, you know, having that connection, having those strong social relationships are crucial to our overall health in general. And so think about that for a second. Do you take the people closest to you for granted because you know that they are always going to be there? Now, the next thing to think about, maybe you have no threats to your safety or your basic needs of fulfillment. You know, you have lots of good relationships. Um, you have, you know, food, water. Um, you you can sleep. You have a roof over your head. You meet those those levels of the hierarchy, okay? Um, now, you still feel like there is something tugging at you. You got some curiosity. You got a drive to achieve, you know, This is where esteem needs or self-actualization comes into view in your life. And to pursue this set of needs, so that esteem, right, to finding that feel good about ourselves and about others and that self-actualization, we have to think in terms of values. So this is not really like a checklist. It's more aspirational, right, because we can kind of check off you know, our, our psychological basic needs. Do we have food, water, you know, temperature, shelter, all those things. We can check those things off. We can check off our safety that we feel genuinely safe most of the time, right? Um, but we can't really check off just our, our values and how we feel about ourselves. It's not as easy as that, right? And all of us need to be connected with and aware of our values. It is so, so important. And it's so surprising how many people have never really given their values much thought. You know, many people think that they are aware of them, yet they might have just identified something that they find appealing, um, that they feel is acceptable or sounds impressive to others, and they just say that those are their values. But identifying your values is more sophisticated than this in a sense, and while you know, it can be relatively straightforward. It does take a bit of time to focus and to put the effort in to really, really see what are my values. It's a big question. So unless our values are met, we are going to struggle to be truly happy. That's that's just how it is. So this is why we need to know what our values are so that we can ensure that we remain true to those values. And sometimes people can struggle to identify them clearly Um, It takes time. I think a lot of self-reflection, journaling, and really figuring out what is most important to you. What do you value? What are your needs? You know, really write these things down um, at all times of the day, on different days, in different environments, and all, you know, so many factors play a role into it. So take your time to really think about exactly what your values are. But it's so, so important, okay? And think of it this way. Basically, our values matter because they underpin our lives. Like, they are the foundation, okay? Think of it as, like, the foundation of a house or the main ingredients of a cake. Like, you just, you can't really bake a cake without flour, okay? Or you can't build a house without the foundation. And if our values are not met, you know, what are we going to do to reach those values, to make sure that they are met, to make sure that our needs are met. And prolonged exposure to an environment or a situation where our values are not satisfied or they are compromised, this gives rise to a sense of hopelessness, loss, you know, our frustration, um, anger, sometimes, you know, those negative emotions that can come up. So we really have to be able to identify those values and meet those values because it plays such a huge, huge, crucial role, okay? Now, we've talked about our needs. We've talked about our values. Do you have a sense of why maybe you are feeling unfulfilled in your life? Do you feel like you are maybe meeting these things, um, you think, relatively, but you you kind of, okay, maybe I'm not meeting some of them. You know, maybe I didn't check off all of that list. You know, maybe I need to really redefine my needs or my values. I think that is the most crucial thing into finding um, 
what is missing out of your life. And that's why I think Maslow's hierarchy is so, is helpful because we can go through step by step, right? And we can do a checklist of our basic psychological needs. We can do our checklist of our safety. And then we got to dive in a little bit deeper to find that esteem and that um, self-actualization. But we can do that, right? We can do that through self-reflection and focusing on ourselves. It's possible. So go through each step of that hierarchy from bottom to top, just like he says, and check off that list when you can. And then dive deeper and find those values and find those needs. And I think you will notice what is missing. Or take an aspect of your life, take your career, and then go through those five steps. Okay, do I have my basic needs in this? Do I feel safe in this? Okay, the love and belonging and esteem and self actualization it all comes connected, okay? So you've got to go through each step in each aspect of your life. And I think it's a really, really cool trick to find what is missing. Okay, so I hope that was helpful. Okay, so now I just want to give you a few tips on f- feeling fulfilled in your life almost instantly. I think I mentioned that there was three earlier, but there is four basic tips that you can implement into your life almost immediately to find that fulfillment, to feel fulfilled, to feel satisfied, especially if you went through the hierarchy, you went through those five steps and you figured out what is missing. Um, These are really kind of cool ways that you can just incorporate more fulfillment into your life. Um, These add on kind of to that hierarchy steps. So the first thing I'm going to tell you is to look inward. Often we look for praise or validation from others. This is natural. This is human. Everybody does it. It it's just is what it is. Um, but we have to learn to look inward for our needs and not outwards. Because at the end of the day, you know what you need. You know your values. And you have to find those things within yourself. It's, it's not something that you're going to obtain or you're going to find somewhere else. It's gonna, you're going to find it by looking inwards. So you have to find that trust within yourself and that's extremely important to identifying those needs and those values. And my next thing for you is taking risks. You could be feeling unfulfilled because maybe you've always just taken the safe road. You know, maybe you've always done things by the book since day one. You're logical. You think safely. You think rationally. You've never really gone off track. Well, maybe you should go off track a little bit, okay? So Doing something completely different than what you're used to can bring so much joy and fulfillment and you never knew that you could obtain that much joy and fulfillment in your life. Don't be afraid to walk on the wild side a little bit. Take a risk. You know, you don't always got to think logically or rationally. I don't know if I should be telling you that, but sometimes we got to go a little bit off track to find that fulfillment, to find those different needs, to find that joy. So don't be afraid to take risks. Now, number three is being present and to practice being satisfied. How many times have you said, if I could own a house like that, if I had a boyfriend or a girlfriend, if I could go on that vacation, if I could only look like that, if, 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 you know, we're always thinking about what we want, but when we're always thinking of what we want, of those ifs, those what ifs, it doesn't leave any room for us to appreciate the things that we do have. And I mean truly, truly appreciate them. If you're always focusing on the, if I could own that house, if I had a boyfriend or a girlfriend, if I could go on that vacation, if I could look like that, you're you're forgetting to look inward. You're forgetting to look at your life right now. So you've got to practice being satisfied with what you have now, being grateful. Write down your gratitudes. Pay attention to the present moment and practice being satisfied with your life now. And then my last thing I'm going to tell you is to simplify, okay? Pay attention to how much you're overanalyzing your life. Pay attention to how often you're making things more difficult for yourself. How often are you standing in your own way because of your own complexity? Simplify your life because this will allow you to connect with your needs and your values and truly appreciate them and help you find what's missing. Simplify, 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 connect to the present moment, go through those five steps of hierarchy, figure out what's missing, you know, ask yourself those questions. What do you need? What do you value? And then, and then ask your, yourself those questions through those five steps in different aspects of your life. And I guarantee you will find those things that are missing for you. 
All right. Well, that is all I have for you today. So I really hope you enjoyed today's episode as much as I enjoyed talking about today's episode. Thank you so much for listening to GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Alyssa Joe. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. Ugh so much. Um, So do not forget to hit that subscribe button. I have new episodes every Monday and Thursday. Head over to our social media pages, like and follow. I update those regularly. If you want to go see that hierarchy, it's up on the social media pages. Go check it out. Then of course, leave a five-star review because it helps immensely and I love reading them. Thank you so much. Till next time. Bye. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Life and Happiness Podcast, part of the GSMC Podcast Network. You can find the show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type in GSMC to find all of our shows from the GSMC Podcast Network, from sex and relationships to health health and wellness, life and happiness, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's episode of the Golden State Media Concepts Life and Happiness Podcast.